What's up, Internet? This is Encanti, and I have a really cool uh, stereo spatialization slash sound design tip for you. Using this cool Max for Live device I found called Polymind. Now, what Polymind does is it sits in a MIDI track, and it's really simple. You got a brain right here, and it does round robin polyphony, where each note goes to a different Polymind satellite. So I've got my brain here, and when, if I send like A, B, C, D into it, it's going to send the first note to A, second one to, or, or it's going to send A to the first satellite, B to the second one, and then C back to the first one. So what I've done is I've put my satellites into an instrument rack. You don't need to put them in a different track or anything. I just put them in instrument rack. And these are going to Chromaphone, my favorite plug-in from AAS. So I've got this chromophone panned to the left, I've got this chromophone panned to the right, and this is just a patch that I made, and then I tweaked a little bit just to make it a little different between the left and the right channel. Uh, let's listen to the sequence. So if I solo one, this is only playing notes, this is only playing notes uh, one, three, five every first, third, and fifth note. And then this one is playing every other note. And when you put them together, you get this really cool stereo sound. Because both of these guys are coming together to play the same melody. So, what I wanted to try today was I want to expand this technique. Because right now I got a really cool stereo mix going between my left and my right channel but I thought wouldn't it be cool if I added a whole bunch more polymine satellites and kept duplicating my chromophone so let's do that I'm going to just uh, take these chromophones and hit duplicate can't tell if it's oh okay. <laughs> yeah let's just do this let's create a chain because you know what duplicating max for live plugins sometimes is kludgy so i'm going to put polymine satellite there that's probably the better way to show how to do it anyway and i'm going to put polymine satellite four right there and let's just grab these chromophones i got my left channel guy right here i got option drag over the new chain and i'm going to take this one and option drag over the other chain and let's keep track of the colors this is left so let's make it white and red I'm so basic alright and we're gonna pan these guys left and right for now okay um, let's check it out actually let's go over to Polymine's uh, the brain and tell it to do four voices instead of two and it should broadcast all these notes to all these four different instruments. Oh uh, yeah, you can see it. And I can solo any of these. And we can hear them. So I'm gonna go just go in and let's start editing these these chromophones. I used a little bit too too generous amount of delay, I think. Let's even mess with the decay. Yeah, maybe different tone, different material. Cool. Now let's go to this one. guy using the release down maybe filter to the noise different maybe a more stiffer mallet change the position cool so now this is a little bit different
cool. So I, I think that it would be cool if I mix these a little bit differently too. If I go ahead and put them a little bit more in the center. This is really the idea I wanted to try. You know, a lot of the time when I see people doing sound design like this, they're multiplying a whole bunch of tracks. I love using instrument racks, so I don't need to multiply tracks. And Polymine's just an awesome way to like send different notes different places. Um, let me get into this real quick. By the way, you see how I'm doing this all in one session? Chromophone is a beast. <laughs> it, it takes up a lot of, of, of processor power. So one thing I do for sound design, I want to leave you with this tip as well, is um, I go to, let me go to my current project. Um, you see, I got a lot of, a lot of different projects in here. And this guy right here was just, I took the whole track and I dragged it and dropped it into the project. And then I opened it as its own project. So I do this often when I'm doing really crazy sound design because when you open it as its own project, it's not running all the other things that you're doing in the larger session. And so you do the detail work here and then you freeze it and put it back into the big session. So as you can see, this starts at like bar 57. This is when it starts in the track that I'm working on. I'm not gonna mess with the sequencing, like the position of where it is on the sequencer at all. And then all I have to do is drag and drop that ALS right back into my bigger session. Uh, so, you know, after I expand on this a little bit, that'll be a really fun thing to do. Um, other things I recommend. I recommend trying out with Polymind. Uh, let's try to put like, if you put a MIDI effect after Polymind, it affects the MIDI before it hits Chromophone, obviously. But, you know, let's try some other things. Let's let's do like uh, like note length, maybe make these longer notes or something. Let's... Let me just listen to this guy for a second. Well, let's make the note longer and also use an arpeggiator. This might be fun. See how that sounds in the mix. Ah, oh, yeah, it's getting kind of chaotic. And then, of course, if I <laughs> if I like this, I can just you know take this bad boy and put it onto just option drag. Actually, let's just throw it into a group of its own. And option drag that over here to this guy. And let's put her right there. So now both these ones are going nuts. And what I can do is kind of customize from here. I think I had some automation. Let's get rid of it. Ooh, that sounds cool. And let's change. Oh, let's change the rate. starting to get a little glitchy let's just for just for giggles uh, I wonder if I can duplicate these yeah let's do it let's let's go until I break oh man we did it okay let's now this is satellite one we have to uh, We have to replace these with five through eight. I would love for someone to latch on to this idea and do some other things with it. I mean, I'm using Chromophone right now, but you could use some crazy synths. I think that in the when I read about this in the description, it said 
Um, the purpose was to make polyphonic synths out of hardware monophonic synths, which is a brilliant idea. All right. <laughs> My computer might crash instantly, but let's give it a shot. Oh, you got to go to the brain, and you got to tell it to send to eight. Boom. Whoa, look at it go. Wow, now let's mess up the arpeggiator. It's not as crazy as I thought it would be. Let's keep messing with all these settings. That is awesome. Um, the other thing that I'm going to end this with is, check it out, we're going to put all of this insanity into one instrument group, command G. And then let's just add an operator <laughs> and this will be like the center channel. And all of those will be like little transients moving around a center. I think maybe that would be a cool sound. All right, let's give it a shot. Oh yeah, that sounds cool. That is awesome. All right. Well, I hope that this has been worth watching, has given you some good ideas. Um, I will drop a link to Polymine and also give a shout out to its creator when I publish this video. Um, yeah. Remember that uh, that cool sound design sometimes is uh, <laughs> it comes down to to taking your instruments and multiplying it in a bunch of pieces. I see this happen all the time with people that are starting out and trying to like get a big sound. But I think where people go wrong is they multiply their, their MIDI track. They literally just duplicate it. And they're sending the same MIDI to a whole bunch of different channels, and it becomes really hard to manage. So finding creative ways to take one MIDI file and send it to a whole bunch of different kinds of instruments or, or get a bunch of different sounds um, that is a key to a lot of really interesting sound design. And uh, if you set it up in a clever way, I mean, imagine this with samples. Imagine this with like, you know, 16 different samples and all of those sample, gen the things that are generating the samples, maybe they're larger samples. And every time it plays a different velocity, for instance, it plays like a different part of it. You could do really insane stuff with this. So if you do anything with this, if this was a useful tutorial, then uh, please share it with me. I want to see you mess with it. I'm going to be using this on all my new music. All right, that's enough talking. Take care. Have a great day.